So we're going to talk about a new song structure now. Before we were talking about a loop-based song where you make a main loop and you expand that out to fill an entire song. Now we're going to talk about what could be called like a pop song structure or a rock song structure. This is something that has been in use for decades now and is the most common uh, structure for a song in terms of popular music um, going today. You hear it all the time. Basically every single song on the radio that you hear follows this structure or some variation of it that's very similar. So let me walk you through it here. I've got a arranger track set up that we're going to learn about in this section that shows the order of the sections. So it begins with an intro, goes to a verse, chorus, verse 2, chorus again, a bridge, chorus again, and an outro. Now what do these parts mean? Well, I'm going to talk about them in the uh, example of a pop song. Usually how this goes is the intro might be some instrumental thing, no voice yet, no lyrics, no singer. And this is to introduce the song and give you a feel for it. It could be quite short. The verse is a part of a song that, cha that changes over time and tells a story maybe. It's where the lyrics or the words are different all the time. They're saying something meaningful that's changing and they're saying I did this and I did this and then an experience like this and so on or whatever it's about. The chorus is the part of the song where usually you hear the name of the song and it gets repeated. So the chorus is something that gets repeated again and again and again and they put what's in there something that's called the hook and the hook is the part of the song that you hear a million times and it's supposed to get stuck in your head. So the chorus is kind of like the climax or the point of the song. The verse is telling a story and then the chorus will say something that means something to that story and then it will say it again and again. Then it moves into the second verse which will be similar to the first one. It'll probably have the same melody as the first verse but different words so it continues the story on. Now when we make ours we're not going to be using words and stuff of course unless you're, you want to and you want to try that but for us this is going to be more to do with melodies. So our first verse is going to have a certain melody. Our chorus is going to have a melody that repeats again and again and the ver second verse will have the same melody as the first but there might be some slight differences to give it a different feel than the first verse. The main point being that the verses are their own sections, the choruses are their own sections and usually the chorus is always the same. This chorus is going to sound almost identical to this chorus, almost identical to this chorus whereas the verses might have a little bit more fluctuation in them or change in them to differentiate them from one another and to differentiate them from the chorus as well. The bridge is a section where uh, you kind of switch to a new vibe for a little while so it contrasts everything that's come before it. So, so far you've had the verse and the chorus and the verse and the chorus and the bridge gives you something new and it only comes once in the song and it feels kind of like you've gone somewhere else for a while and then it comes back to the chorus one last time and then there's an outro. So that's the general structure. Now what I want to say about this is that the, for us all these sections except maybe the intro and outro are going to have different chord progressions. Sometimes in pop music or folk music or anything people might use the same chord progression for the entire song and that's totally acceptable and it's done all the time. However, I'm a fan of music that has more change in it. It's not so repetitive. So what we're going to try to do is have a different chord progression for our verse, our chorus, and our bridge. Each time the chorus comes, that same chord progression is going to happen. Each time the verse comes, that chord progression is going to happen and so on. And so each section is going to feel like its own thing. And that's kind of the idea is we're trying to write complementary chord progressions. Chord progressions that are different but go together and flow into one another. This is what this section is really going to be about. So in the previous task we created this new loop. And we're going to have to decide, does this loop feel like the chorus or a verse or a bridge? And how you might decide that is by thinking about what the, what the purpose of those sections are. The chorus is usually the biggest part of the song. It's like the main event. The verse is kind of maybe toned down a little bit and might be, have some interesting elements in it that change and do things. And the bridge is going to be something different from the other two. Uh, that kind of is its own entity that we have a, a little respite or a vacation from the rest of the song into the bridge and then we come back into the chorus again. So 
it'll be up to you to determine whether you feel the loop you created feels like a main event or a secondary part of the song, or it feels like you're going to create some other parts that are different, and this could be the bridge. Usually, the part we create first is going to be the verse or the chorus, and then the bridge, we're going to be informed by what we've done in the verse and in the chorus, and we'll be able to make a decision, oh, okay, you know, I used the chords C, D, E, G, and A in the verse and the chorus, but I never used F. Maybe I'll start the bridge with an F chord, and then it will make it feel different from the rest of them, and I'll put a whole different kind of drum loop on there and everything. So that could be an idea. As I mentioned earlier, this um, song structure is very popular and it has some variations as well. It's not always that it goes verse straight into chorus. There might be another section in between that serves as a link between the verse and the chorus and they call that a pre-chorus. There's other little sections that people insert sometimes to kind of smooth things out and we are going to get into learning about that, but for now, just to get like a a fundamental understanding of the structure. It's good to just keep it so simple. Verse, chorus. Verse 2, where it's the same as the first, but it's slightly different. Chorus is the same. Bridge, chorus is the same. Outro. We're going to learn to use this arranger track up here so that we can organize our song and all of the parts will fit in to these little chunks. And then we can actually move these chunks around and reorder our song. I'm actually replacing chunks right now. Let me do that again. We can move them around like this, and now I've got a verse into verse two, and then a chorus, or I can put the chorus right at the beginning of the song. And when I move these, they're actually gonna move all of the instruments inside of that section. So if you wanted to reorganize your song, it's really easy. You just drag these big chunks around, and it moves everything for you. The last thing that I would like to say is that in order to do this, in order to write these complementary chord progressions that link with each other, we need to understand a little bit more about keys. Now, have you heard me say this a bit before? I don't mean piano keys. I'm talking about playing in a key. So when someone says I'm playing in the key of C major or of A minor or G minor or whatever, we want to know what that means. And we've touched on it a little bit so far, but we're going to go more into depth with that just shortly. So let's learn about that first, and then we're going to come back around, and we're going to take our loop and make it into this full pop structure song.